Nvidia 50 series is just two weeks away and there's no shortage of performance claims circulating about it, but I haven't seen any Blender ones yet. Now, I'm not particularly excited about uh, features like multi-frame generation or other AI performance enhancements. However, I am curious about what this means for Blender users. One thing I'm confident about, the RTX 5070 will come nowhere near matching the performance of a 4090 in Blender. 4090 performance at 549. So to satisfy my curiosity, I sat down with a spreadsheet and got to work. There'll be a follow-up video once the new cards are out, so hit subscribe so you don't miss it. So how does the RTX 5090 stack up against the RTX 4090? Well, let's start with the raw numbers. First of all, the CUDA cores. The 5090 has 33% more than the 4090. While the clock speeds are slightly lower, the overall performance is still expected to be higher. On the conservative side, I reckon we're going to see 20% to 27% uplift compared to the 4090. Now, this won't be the same across the lower models, so stay tuned for that. Let's talk about the memory size and the bandwidth. With 32 gigabytes of RAM, the 5090 has eight gigabytes more than the 4090, and it runs faster too. A 78% increase in that memory bandwidth. This will greatly benefit rendering tasks involving high resolution textures or just complex scenes. Now, the ray tracing core advancements are the ones that power NVIDIA's optics technology, which may reduce some parts of the rendering times, especially the denoising. And while the impact on that final render and denoising remains uncertain, I expect significant improvements in the viewport denoising, a feature I think most Blender users will appreciate. Now, looking at the 5090, I predict a score of around 13,500 points. Combing through this data took quite a bit of time. If you appreciate it, go ahead and like the video. Predicted Blender Mark scores for the RTX 50 series were quite hard to calculate. However, based on my calculations, here's what we might expect. I reckon the RTX 5090 will get around 13,500 13, points. The RTX 5080 will get around 9,100, 9,200. The RTX 5070 Ti will get around 7,000, and the RTX 5070 will get around 5,700. Now I've compiled these predictions into a chart alongside Blender benchmark data. The RTX 5090 leads the pack, but it's not the same monumental leap. The 4090 was compared to the 3090. Let's take a look at the chart in a bit more detail. So first of all, let's just have a look at the entire chart. As you can see, there are many, many graphics cards in here, stretching back quite a way, all the way back to a 1080 that I had all those years ago. And it's amazing to see the progress, especially in recent years, that graphics cards can have when it comes to Blender. Now, notably in here, I really want to say congratulations to Apple for actually managing to make a mobile chip that comes remotely near the top. You can see here it's 40 core. And now this at the moment is in a £4,000, $4,000 laptop. So it is pretty expensive considering this up here is half the price, that 5090 score. Wow. As you can see here, the bright green ones are all the predicted scores for the new cards now let's just go into the charts here and whittle it down a little because this is a very long chart stretching all the way back in years now this is not to discourage anybody with a lesser gpu but i want to see the data a bit smoother around the top here so i'm going to cut it down not by the card itself but by the score if we have a look at down here we've got scores going all the way down into well 500 um that's around what my macbook gets to be honest so i am quite interested in getting a better macbook at some point but that's not important at the moment what we're focused on is let's say from about 3000 and above so if i just hide everything that doesn't score at least 3000 in on the blender benchmark using the optics engine or similar i suppose the apple one does not use optics let's see what we've got here okay that's a much better chart let's let's just get it to fit on the screen 
Now, what I hope you'll be able to glean from this is kind of an upgrade path if you have any of the graphics cards already on here. We can see there are a couple of AMD. We've got some Apple ones here. And as I mentioned, in a mobile form, that's absolutely amazing despite the price okay so we've got a 3070 down at the bottom and a 4060 that's how those stack up but when we get to the 5070 i'm quite excited how close that is it was smack bang in between a 3090 and a 3090 ti that looks like a great spot and i believe this card is relatively cheap as well compared to what the 3090 was so it's amazing to see that progression but as you can see it's nowhere near i'm pointing at the 5090 but it's nowhere near where the uh, 4090 is which is absolutely bonkers 4090 performance to even claim that and i think this is mainly due to the confusion between what is performance if you're making up a ton of frames with multi-frame generation can you really claim it's four times more performant i don't think you can so let's jump to the 5070 Ti. The 5070 Ti, is, with my prediction, is bang up against the 4070 Ti Super. So if you've already got the 4070 Ti Super, there's not much of an upgrade path there in terms of maybe a side grade. Maybe you'll get better performance or features. Those are some of the things you may consider when doing any upgrades or anything like that. Now, once you get to 5080, 4090, and 5090 territory, these cards just start stepping up massively compared to this gradual climb up here. It's amazing how that technology is arcing up. I don't think we're going to see a huge runaway curve, but it is amazing to see it spiking up like that. So yes, I do think there is genuinely a reason why someone might want to move from a 4090 to a 5090. And that's primarily they're likely to be using it to create money or it's part of their work in some other way. And so having a better one will make them more productive anyway i think this is a very insightful chart I, I love putting it together and i hope you find it useful as well so let's talk about the raw performance versus cost of performance these predictions focus solely on performance rather than cost of performance and i've tried my best to compare comparable cards in terms of the number of cores they have for example Pricing can vary significantly by region, which makes it really difficult to assess value without understanding your individual or business circumstances. If you rely on your PC to generate income, this is certainly going to be a consideration for the upgrade. Now, once the cards are released, I'll provide an updated video to help you make more informed purchase decisions. I'll be interested in your thoughts on the price of the new cards, especially where you are in the world as well. Do you get ripped off where you are? Now, as a creator, I'm going to value the fact that the 5090 includes three encoding engines up from the two on the 4090. And this could lead to 40 to 50% faster exports. In supported codecs, when working with a video editor for media creators, this is a noteworthy improvement. However, it's not going to make any difference in Blender when it comes to the rendering side of things because video encoding in Blender is CPU only for the time being. Now, I'm really considering the upgrade from my 3090. The two to two and a half times rendering speed for both Blender and the videos I make would be incredibly useful. Now, I'm creating a Blender-focused upgrade guide, and when that's ready, you can check it out right here.